the, so the Senate of the United States variety has held a hearing on what's called the No Fakes Act. Uh, and of course, Congress and the, you know, the Senate, they love to come up with these acronyms uh, for their bills. So No Fakes um, me is, stands for, quote, Nurture Originals, Foster Art, and Keep Entertainment Safe. Um, so it's like, I feel like, well, what came first, that or no fakes? I feel like they came up with no fakes and they figured out, well, what, someone pull out a thesaurus. So what, how can we make this work and have it make sense? Um, so the kind of purpose of the bill would be to provide guardrails and regulation on the technology that powers deep fake technology. So if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, deep fakes have been around for like a while, like a few years, kind of predating like the AI craze. Um, but deep fakes are essentially a way to, through computer imagery, map a person's face onto another person's face or, or just replicate a human being in a highly detailed and realistic way. Not always, but again, like I said, often superimposing it. So like you would, you could use me and then deep fake Joe Biden onto me, Right. And then, you know, using AI voice technology, I could say stuff that Joe Biden wouldn't say, like, you know, I love big booty Latinas or something, something ridiculous, right? Um, well, I'm sure he does. I mean, who doesn't? But <laughs> so the idea of the bill is that individuals, particularly like celebrities, right? Um, but I guess it would send to all individuals. Individuals would have, you know, quote, digital replication rights, end quote. Um, and Deadline notes that these rights would you know, not only be for the person, but that if once they pass away, that these rights would extend to their heirs, executors, or assignees of a deceased, of the deceased person for a period of like 70 years. So it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, like intellectual property where like a book will enter the public domain, like 70 years after the death of the author or whatever the rules are, cause they've been changed a lot. Um, you know, over the years, um, as corporations want, more uh, longer periods of time where they have the exclusive rights to something <laughs> Disney. Um, but the idea would then be that people and companies and platforms could then be sued for producing or hosting quote unquote digital replicas, right? Or, or rather unauthorized digital replicas. Um, and of course this is a huge concern for the entertainment industry, which is why I'm talking about this, um, particularly for individuals, right? You know, because we've been seeing this with virtual personas or deep fakes of celebrities. Sometimes they're very benign and, and harmless and they're funny. You know, like the classic one I feel like is like Joe Biden and Donald Trump like playing Fortnite or Call of Duty or whatever it is like together and like trading, you know, jibes, you know, and kind of digging on one another. And it's kind of funny and it's all in good fun or whatever. But the, the other end of that can be really, you know, heinous. So it's like, I remember earlier this year, I believe, or maybe near the end of last year, there was like a fake Taylor Swift sex tape going around on Twitter. And, and you know, Twitter, to their credit, quickly acted. I remember it was kind of dumb though, because basically they, they didn't, because it's Twitter is now a shell of its former self. So they, their only solution was, we're just going to mute anyone talking about Taylor Swift. Um, which I guess solved the problem. At least it was a band-aid solution. But in any case, so so this is this is a big problem that individuals and politicians are concerned about, right? And legislation is gonna be it's gonna be very interesting and tricky to kind of figure this out because the technology is moving faster than society can even wrap its head around the potential ramifications of the technology. And then compared but and then let alone the legislation being able to be passed, right? Like g government in America just moves so slowly unless the politicians stand to benefit directly. If that's not the case, it's going to take a really long time for anything to ever actually get get passed into law, right? So it's like before we can even figure out a solution to a problem, five new problems have arisen um, when it comes to this kind of technology. And there's currently no law that would punish people for creating deep fakes without permission. So. Uh, there were a few, uh, you know, cast of characters that came to the Senate hearing uh, to kind of voice their support or their opposition to this bill. Um, and I feel like the big one was a uh, music artist, music phenomenon. Well, she's not really a phenomenon. She's pretty, you know, like, uh, not indie, but you know, I don't think my parents would know who she is. Um, FK Twigs. Um, and she kind of made this, she, she wrote this kind of letter or speech or what have you. 
And she's talking about, you know, she plans... Because the bill isn't about getting rid of this technology. The bill is about ensuring that people have the rights to their digital likeness, right? So she discussed her plans to develop a fake AI version of herself, right? Oh, excuse me. I have this quote here from her saying, quote... In the past year, I've developed my own deep fake version of myself that is not only trained in my personality, but also can use my exact tone of voice to speak many languages, which Saivar, I think, is the coolest application of this technology. So instead of needing to have people dub movies, like you could just have Tom Cruise's voice speaking Chinese or French or whatever. Anyway, back to the quote. I will be engaging my AI twigs, which is kind of funny play on her name. AI Twig. Um, I will be engaging my AI Twigs later this year to extend my reach and handle my online social media interactions whilst I continue, whilst, whilst I continue to focus on my art form, uh, excuse me, while, whilst I continue to focus on my art from the comfort and solace of my studio, end quote. So, you know, I think she's touching on an interesting point here that the technology is, as with almost every piece of technology ever invented ever in human history, it is neither a positive or a negative, it's a neutral tool. And it's how these tools are used or applied is what, you know, it's the actions taken with the tools that that are good or bad, not the tools themselves. So, you know, she I think she's touching on an interesting point here that the technology could be extremely useful to artists. But again, so long as they control the rights to their digital likeness. Um, and we have her continuing here saying, quote, what is not acceptable is when my art and my identity can simply be taken by a third party and exploited falsely for their own gain without my consent due to the absence of appropriate legislative control, end quote. Um, so that makes a good, that, I think she makes a, I think Miss Twigs makes a good point, right? This idea that, you know, other people could, like, I, I could find ways to apply this and, and help my brand, but people with the current legal framework, or rather say with the absence of a current legal framework, you know, anyone could just take that and use it for their own purposes, right? So that's a pretty compelling argument. On the flip side, we do have some opposition um, to not, not, no one is, no one serious is opposed to banning deep fake porn, right? That That's not... Um, or rather unauthorized deep, deep fake porn, pornography. No, no, no serious person is going to be against that. But there are some concerns here being brought up. And, and some of these are kind of like, okay, you're saying that because you stand to lose some money if this goes through. But I think there is some truth to, to some of these comments. So we have uh, some, some perspective. We have a perspective here from Ben Scheffner, who's the senior vice president of the Motion Picture Association. And he spoke saying, quote, legislating in this area involves doing something that the First Amendment sharply limits, regulating the content of speech. It will take very careful drafting to accomplish the bill's goals without inadvertently chilling or even prohibiting legitimate, constitutionally protected uses of technology to enhance storytelling, end quote. Um, and and he brings up, a, a, and I never even thought of this, but he brought up a really good uh, use case example of why this could be dangerous. And he points to Forrest Gump, uh, you know, in, in that film's use of, you know, this large array of like this cast of digital historical figures, right? So like iconically, it's like George, uh, George Bush, <laughs> what's his name? Forrest Gump meets John F. Kennedy and they get to have an interaction and like through very early mid nineties, you know, technology being able to like change JFK's mouth to say what they need him to say or whatever. Um, but he, here's, here's the quote from Scheffner saying, quote, to be clear, those depictions did not require the consent of their heirs and requiring such consent would effectively grant heirs or their corporate successors the ability to censor betrayals they don't like, which would violate the first amendment, end quote. That's really interesting, right? So you could see this going forward where with the FKA twig scenario and saying, so, you know, wind that control, but then, you know, down the road, you know, decades after they've passed away, the family could gatekeep that access to make sure that they're being presented in the way they want to be presented, um, as opposed to maybe how they were, or, or or to rather to capture something about how they were, their essence, right? Um, and Scheffner essentially feels like, you know, whether it comes to, you know, a actively misleading or negative portrayal of, of like a, of, of a real person or any kind of sexually explicit material using deep fake technology. Scheffner feels that 
current laws already protect against most of those concerns, right? Um, so all this would do would be to violate free speech. That all of the concerns everyone is talking about are there's already laws in place. They they're not specific to this technology, but they're all kind of in the same ballpark, right? Um, and and there is just like a general concern from studios and people like Schefner of like, you know, how realistic does it have to be to now become illegal, right? Like we're talking about these digital likenesses that are like photo realistic and photo accurate. But what about parody, right? Like The Simpsons is famous for parodying famous people and celebrities since it's since it's aired in like the late eighties. Are those are those going to now be illegal? Is it now illegal to have a Simpsons cartoonified version of someone, or is it literally only referring to content that is trying is so realistic that it is? intentionally trying to mislead you into thinking it is the person, right? That's an interesting legal gray area that I don't know if, if we, if we, again, as we as a society, I don't think by the time we wrap our heads around this question, the technology is going to advance that there's going to be so many other, it's like whack-a-mole. By the time you whack one of the, whack one of them, three more pop up, right? Um, and, and just to be clear, at this at this time of at least me talking to you guys about this, this is tentative legislation. This may not even move forward, but this is just a hearing to kind of see, you know, getting getting those different uh, those different perspectives.